Okay, it's 503. I'd like to bring the meeting to order. Waitley Finance Committee, May 3rd, 5 p.m. Um, we have on our agenda um, to vote in minutes from April 13th as well as April 18th. We make a motion to accept the minutes of the 13th and the 18th. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I got to do a roll call. Brenda? Brenda is connecting to the audio. Oh, now she might. <clears throat> is she in? Okay. Let's do a let's do a roll call. Okay, this is concerning both minutes from the thirteenth and the eighteenth. Donna, aye. Dan, aye. Jim, aye. Paul, yes. Tom, aye. Brenda. Aye. Sorry, having technical difficulties here, but aye. That's okay. We got you. Thanks for getting. Thanks for coming on. Okay, so we have that done and put away. Okay, the second agenda item is to discuss and revote the fiscal year 2024 operating budgets due to receipt of lower operating budget requests. So I'd like to turn this over to uh, the boss. He takes care of everything. Yeah. So, okay, Brian. Um, so once we took our final votes, final in quotation marks, yeah. um, we received a lower budget, a reduced budget from South County EMS. We received a um, in the final numbers for the insurance. So it allowed us to reduce the operating budget by about six thousand um, dollars. So, and that's about when we plug it into our spreadsheet here with the other changes that were voted with the finance committee at the last meeting, it did cost the tax rate by about a penny, um, but it's about $11,000 reduction overall. Um, so um, let me just share this with you. Uh, so this is just showing the budget. So these were, Treasurer Collector was adjusted um, by vote with the Finance Committee last meeting. Conservation Commission, uh, we reduced that we, we removed the $10,000 request and we put that in a separate article mm -hmm. with available funds. Um, the South County EMS was reduced from, um, it was $115,000 and some change, it was reduced to $112,337. And then we were able to reduce property and liability insurance and workers' compensation insurance as well. Um, so that gives us a new um, bottom line total town operating budget of six million uh, twenty thousand two hundred nine. This also uh, changes the enterprise fund overhead because the enterprise fund pays for portions of those budgets that were adjusted. Uh, the treasure collector it did for three of them: treasure collector, property and liability insurance, and workers' comp. So they pay a portion of that. So that also adjusted their overhead amount here. So. Um, I I reached out to Paul and asked him if he wanted to revolt the you know the new budget amounts, and so we set up this meeting to to do that. Um, alternatively, we could have left them the same because we would have had enough money. It's just you know, um, right. We just thought that we might want to revolt it, so have a lower operating budget, which will lead to lower and less taxes. Um, so that's pretty much why. That's why we're here. Why we're back here, yeah. That's why we have changes. Open the floor up to any and all questions, conversations, comments. Anybody? Tom? Seems pretty straightforward. Okay. So if we um, approach this, um, so should we take scams first, treasure collector first? Or? Um, can, can we do them all together? Uh, I, I, I would say I would just read out the amounts for all of them, and then if you just want to do one vote, that'll that'll save you you know, motion after motion after motion. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so we'll take treasurer collector. 
Well, we'll have to do the yeah, we'll have to do the bottom amounts too, anyway. So yes. So we have the treasure collected now at seventy-seven thousand two hundred forty dollars. Could you move that down? Which puts our yes. And we have a um, well, we have a stable conservation commission. Why was that high highlighted? Um, well, that's just, so. This these two just show what the finance committee. These are two changes from the previous draft. Remember, we took out the ten thousand. Oh, the ten thousand. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, so that's sorry. So those amounts changed. Okay. So the Cons conservation commission, uh, three thousand four um, three thousand four hundred twenty seven dollars, um, which gives us a new general government subtotal of $564,275. Yeah. Um, do we have a motion for those three for general government? So moved. Second. Okay. So we will take a vote for general government. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brenda? Aye. Okay. Very good. Okay. Can we? Culture Recreation Services, 178331. We no changes to that one. No changes. No. We've already um, voted on that. Yeah. Public Health, 102343. Three. Okay. No changes. Uh, public Safety, so that is like. Uh, Reduction in the South County EMS budget. Bottom line is now for 883233. I make a motion we accept it. Second. All those in favor? Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brenda? Aye. Okay. The court support. Remains unchanged for 53739 insurance and benefits. There are two reductions to property and liability insurance, workers' comp insurance. So the bottom line is now about $848,433. Okay. So move. Second. All those in favor? Donna. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Yes. Tom? Yes. Brenda? Aye. Good. Okay. Unclassifieds remain the same. Mm -hmm. 72,525. Education remain the same. <clears throat> $2,262,580. Net service remain the same. 49,660. So the total, you probably want to read about the total. Um, $6,020,209. Uh, so moved. Oh, my God. Okay, second. So moved. Second. All those in favor? We'll go Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Yes. Tom. Yes. Brenda. Aye. Okay. Um, and then, so this also altered the enterprise, enterprise. fund water department overhead costs. Um, so their total new total is now $263,030. So moved. Second. Take a vote. Donna. Dan, I. Jim, I. Paul, I. Tom, yes. Brenda, I. Okay. That right. does it. So this is the budget that will show up on the as recommended by the finance committee. Okay. May I ask clarification? Yeah. Who made the motion and who seconded for the vote? Um. I second it. I guess I did. I, 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 I Jim. Okay, thank Jim. you. Thank you. Okay. Are we and, good? Yeah, can I just share? Can I just talk about one thing? Yep. Sort of where this leads, uh, leaves us with uh, past two and a half. Um, just share that. So we can, not there, right? So one of the things I like to track um, 
in terms of how we're, how the town is moved financially is what's happening with our excess levy capacity. Yeah. Again, um, our levy limit is going to increase each year by two and a half percent mm -hmm. the prior year limit plus certified new growth. Um, so, and again, our excess levy capacity is how much we can raise, how much the town can raise through taxes without needing a prop two and a half override. Right. Special town meeting, you know, forward right. approval that we would never really want to go to. Um, so it's been, so it's been growing, right? Um, and this is about where it peaked in 2022. Um, you know, it, it increased a little bit. And I'm actually happy to see that where this budget landed, it's a, a decrease of about 56,000, but where we started, it was significantly higher. Um, and it made me a little bit uneasy. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad we landed where we are. Mm -hmm. Um, because I 56,000 is something that we can make, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, but if we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars each year, we're going to be getting into trouble yeah. um, over a relatively short period of time. Um, again, what's what's going on here is, um, so I make a projection, right? I, I use I use prior year certified new growth, and this is what I carry over, and this is what we project is, mm -hmm. you know, the increase here and as to how much our limit will go up. Yeah. But what's been happening is, you know, we slowly see the certified new growth slowing. Yes. Right? Because we don't have a lot of new development that's happened. We don't have a lot of opportunity or easy opportunities for new development. That may be so, changing. Um, so that's slowing. So that's why. So we're seeing increasing costs. Yep. Um, but we're seeing uh, a, a slowdown in, in our in the growth of our tax base, yeah. which which has increased as expenses go up, the burden is shared over. It's grown over a smaller. We're not adding as many people to share the burden, right? Right. Right. So it's just something that we need to keep in mind. I think 56, 50, 56 thousand is is okay um, in terms of you know where we landed um, in terms of the tax rate. Um, it's still lower than what it has been historically. I think we're at fifteen sixty-seven in, or was that 20? 20, 20. Um, you know, we had the big drop here because we had this was a reassessment year. Yeah. Um, so we're still really under where we were. Um, but but part of that is because of these seven values being increased. So, um, you know, this is the projection as as to what it as to what the budget would be um, mm -hmm. in terms of the change in the, in the single family uh, average single family tax code it's about two and two point six percent so it's can you send this to uh, us yep you have it we do yep it's under it's under the budget projections okay number seven that's on the email it's on the there's tabs on this so it's on the bottom tab here that says drop two and a half impact um all right that's a good question it, the average single family tax bill is that literally uh, residential properties or just or are the business properties forwarded to that? I'm sorry, it's residential. That, it is what it says. Yeah, it's average great. single family. Yeah, like a single family house. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm using last year's you know average because uh -huh. they have that's your that's evaluation is the average home is worth three hundred sixty eight thousand two sixteen. Yeah. Um, and their tax bill is 53, going to be 5367. Yep. And at the top of the sheet is, um, but these are just calculations in terms of the levy ceiling. Um, there's the levy ceiling. Um, tax levy limit right here. That's, that's our ceiling. Where's the ceiling? Yes. Yeah. Okay, limit total. Uh, maybe this doesn't show the same. Well, that's the ceiling, right? Ceiling would be seven million something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, add, add the six million. Okay. With the he keeps scrolling, we'll see it. Yeah. Excess capacity, one, one, three. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's not a bad thing. No. And that's not something I mean, that we want to go after. No. You know, on maintain services, but that is no two and a half override or right. Exactly. I mean, I think it's it, it's a good place to land. I mean, the town was sort of forced to make changes in terms of funny the police departments here, but in terms of how it polices mm -hmm. with the you know with the the police reform and how that's going to impact part time yeah. the availability of part time officers. Right. Um, so we're able to do that. Um, there's going to, there's obviously changes coming to the fire department as well. Um, right. So you know doing that and you know, only having this much of a hit in terms of our excess levy capacity, I think, I, I think it moves the town in a really good spot yeah. moving forward. Um, but again, you'll, you'll get sick of me hearing it. Anything we can do to encourage new growth in town, that's mm -hmm. appropriate for, you know, that's appropriate that's for the appropriate. area. Yeah. Right. Um, right. It's something that we can really focus on because, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. you got to create the conditions to make it easy for people to, to do that. So or at least, Fair to be fair about yeah and the tax rates. So the other one of the other components is, is how do we increase local receipts, right? Um, there's still two licensed cannabis retail shops that we've been waiting for for five years. Um, <laughs> you told I us say this five every years year. ago. I say this every year. They're closed. They're going to open up. Yeah, and I'll say it again. Have we spent that? No, but um, I remember when. We were talking about, you know, hey, we're going to get their licenses oh, and the God. possible money that they could generate. Swimming he, pools at the he, he sat right school, there and he said, don't in. bank on it. Don't, you know, don't figure that it's going to happen. You know? So, so the update for that is you know, on the, the gray building, um, the, which is DMCTC, they have a cultivation facility on the road and, and manufacturing. I mean, they're growing. They're growing and they're processing, mm -hmm. um, but they haven't opened up the retail shop yet. I know they're still waiting on their final license. And Do we get anything from them? A 3% excise tax for retail. But what they're growing and selling, we get nothing. Okay. Yeah. They did away with that. Um, with the whole... They made it extremely difficult. Okay. I have no idea. Yeah. Stay um, good. And then Toro Verde, the, the red building has been licensed since. 2018 or 2019 just sold to a different parent company um, and they're supposedly going to open up and yeah, that that facility i've been in, inside that facility that facility has been built out probably for two years wow um there was some license, licensing issues with the owner of the parent company the other one and i think that the ccc actually made them divest of um divest of the tour verdict companies because they had too many licenses mm -hmm. I would just keep them. so yeah. um there's the potential there still, but I feel like I'd, I'd be misleading if I said I hope it's next year. <laughs> any uh, any so other license comes out? Are there any other um you know, possibilities for taxable um Sites in town, anything? I'll get right to it. How's the how's the castaways doing? Um, closed. It is. Um, do we um, ever see that? The, the licenses are source? still valid. Licenses are still valid. Yep. Um. So they could reopen. Okay. Okay. What What about the um? What about the uh? The land on Route Six that we own. I mean, six. The Mayo's. Yeah, the Mayo's Route Five and Ten. Uh, so we're having a uh, there's a wetland delineation being done now, mm -hmm. and uh, Phase One environmental site assessment and um, some conceptual development plans to figure out what's actually developable on the lot. Uh, preliminarily, it looks like the only spot that's likely unregulated for development. On that parcel is probably the foundation of the little is restaurant it? is. Yeah. Um, so um, that should sort of clear up any ideas about what what can they can they can or can't be done with the property. Okay. Um, and then we can make decisions based on that. But it's looking like that's 
likely the only place that it's going to be unregulated. There's, yeah. there's some things you can do within the 100 to 200 foot buffer area, you know, front protection area, but I never realized how close the stream in the back was yeah. to the road, to be honest yeah. with you, um, when we were out there. So. Okay. And um, how's our favorite little school doing in the center, center of town? Good. Um, yeah. We had no interest in anybody that wanted to lease it. Okay. Um, so now Donna <laughs> spent a lot of time on a uh, historic preservation restriction that we will issue with the request for proposals once Mass Historic Commission um, gives us the go-ahead. Okay. And then that will be put up. I don't get a vote on it, but my yep. my my anticipation is that will be put up for sale subject okay. to the RFP. Okay. Um, Brian, does, does the town have the ability? Does the town have the ability to say like for the the Demio lot? Could they fill the building there and then lease it out? Or would I don't know how that would work? They would. Could they build something and be the landlord for it, for example? Yep, you just need the money to yeah to you need you to do it. You probably. I would think you should have somebody that wants to lease it long term or. Something I wouldn't want to be spending town money, you know, hoping somebody's going to rent it or lease it. Yeah, have a, have a plan ahead of time. Yeah. Well, those are the uh, those are the few revenue sources that we have in town that have been untapped and are unrealized. So hopefully things will move forward with those. So revenue from those sites will. Uh, Will help the town out. Yeah, and there's there's the the study that's ongoing around ASA 35. That ASA 35 study yep. that's happening. Yep. We had a first meeting with the, the consultant, and we we're trying to identify parcels in, in areas that mm -hmm. would be you know ripe for redevelopment. Um, so that's going to move forward as well. You know, there's interest. There's additional space in trigger shops that aren't being taken by. Um, the, the marijuana source. Mm -hmm. So, um, but really, one of the biggest, one of the the focus of that study, or one of the focuses of that study, is to try to figure out how can we use that area to to generate money by the people from the people who are passing through. Right. Um, there's a significant amount of people that get on and off 91, mm -hmm. you know, off exit 35, and there's a significant amount of people who drive right past. Yeah. We have no reason to stop and no right, reason to leave right. money. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the focuses is how can we use that area of town, which is significantly different than yeah. most other areas of town, and I think could be treated differently to generate revenue for the town yeah. from people who don't live here, right? Exactly. Um, everybody lives here, pays taxes for the town services. And quite honestly, people who drive through here use our services too and they don't pay a dime for them right if somebody if somebody crashes or drives off 91 yeah. it's this guy who goes out or it's the fire department who goes out and yeah. nobody pays a dime for that no right um, oh no we pay the dime we well, that's true oh, the, the dime is paid the dime is paid it's paid for by everybody here yeah but but if south county goes out there they get paid they can go for it, right? So they can go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you start billing people? I was going to say there'd be, there'd be less <laughs> accidents if we could bill them. There'd be, there'd be less people calling, probably. <laughs> that's true. Um, okay. So that's also, you know, one thing is that's also one, one of the things that we're looking at as ways to increase okay. non property tax revenue. Any further? Any questions from Brian regarding the revenue? Um, potential that we have in town. Okay, let's uh let's continue with the agenda. And if you notice, number three on the agenda to discuss an equitable method for determining compensation in future fiscal year. I think that we would all agree that the current approach we have, um, at least this year, was at the very least uncomfortable. Well, to be truthful, um, it was contentious. 
Um, and it would be helpful, I think, for everybody if that were not so. Um, so we talked about this a little bit in the past. And I asked you to think about it and what you thought about it. And if you had any ideas to move forward, um, what we would like and what we would um, like to avoid. So any, any thoughts, any, anybody? Um, can I start? Sure. The, the 10 comparable pound salary survey. Yeah is a significant burden of the administrative assistance time. Sure. Um, we have, we spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours chasing, chasing people to mm -hmm. get us information that quite honestly should be available. Should be online. Should, should be available easily, but it's not. Right. Um, now, well, I'll be honest, when I get a request like that, it's not top of my list either, so. Nope. The process it, it takes up it takes up a lot of time. Percog does a, a salary survey, but quite honestly, it comes out late. Um, comes out late in the process, and it's difficult to find comparable counts that you know can, that are in there as well. Yeah. Um, well, although Wait Waitley's in Franklin County, obviously there's a there's a significant difference between towns and. Franklin County, in Northern Franklin County, mm -hmm. and on the outskirts of Franklin County, than, than Waitley. Um, I a lot of times I think Waitley is much more similar to Frank, uh, Hampshire County towns than Franklin County towns, um, just in terms of everything that's happening here, yeah. the environment, the, the activity that's going on here, economic activity yeah. that's going on here. Um, but it's listen, no comparison is is great, um, but. What the DPW does in one town is going to be different than what it does in a different in another town. Sure. What the treasure collector does is different. What the town clerk does is different. It, it's it's just different. It, it, it's New England and every town does it its own way, yep. which makes comparisons difficult. Um, so that process is hard and it's hard to do it every year. Um, if we could find a way that something was set for a period of years, then we wouldn't have to do this every single year. If we were updating something, Every five years or ten years, it would be much easier. Um, and in terms of in terms of the cola, that's difficult as well. Um, there's the data that's collected is not collected at a level that that is a perfect fit for Waitley. Of course, um, and that's obviously a matter of resources, and mm -hmm. um, it is what it is, and it's not something that we can change. Um, and it's. There's no good way to measure it. Um, each town has its own process. Each town has its own constraints and, and not constraints. Each town has a different financial situation that impacts, you know, its own decisions. Right. Um, and um, the comparisons are difficult. It, it and it's uncertain, right? It, it doesn't give us certainty us as the town in, in trying to plan for the the the, the, right. the financial future. It doesn't give us certainty as to what. Salary costs will be going forward. Yeah, um, and it's not really, it's not really geared towards any specific benchmark. Yeah. Um, so it, it would be nice if, if we didn't have that pull discussions, and if you know it was just sort of this is what it's going to be. These are the economic indicators, and this is what it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Um, but that's just those are my yeah. more than couple of thoughts about it. Well, one of the um, one of the seminal moments, I think, in this year, and as I look, and I and I overlooked it at first because um, well, I overlooked it, but when I spent some time and went through um, the letter that um, Lynn Scott, Lynn, Lynn Scott, Lynn, Lynn Sibley, Lynn Sibley um, that she sent. Um, what was pointed, you know, to me was when she made reference to the fact that 
And I didn't want it to come out this way. I want to speak about roles. And there were roles in every organization that have various import to that organization and those less so. It had nothing to do with personality. It has nothing to do with people. But she raised a good point in that when we look at the admin jobs, for the most part, they are um, staffed by female employees, for the most part. And that when we look at jobs that are out, that are chief jobs, whether it's DPW, police, fire, that it never seems to be an issue um, in regards to you know how we look at those jobs from a dollar and cents perspective. Um, and then we had a meeting, and this is where it hit me, and that's exactly what we did. That's exactly what we did. We took the treasurer collector position. We challenged it. We cut it back from an from the hour perspective, and I thought we all felt comfortable about that. And then when it came to raises for police, fire, and highway, it kind of went through, except with the exception of the fire chief, which we bantered about for two meetings back to back, um, but it still went through. So, and I'm not faulting anybody for this, it's just, it just seems to be part of the process. And I don't know why, but it is. And I, can we fix it? I don't know. And, but I think we have to be cognizant of it. And, um, but that being said, what really struck me is that that's not the job of the finance committee. It's not our job to know who's in what job and how much they should get and how much they shouldn't get, because we're only here for about eight meetings a year. That job belongs to the individuals who those people report to, which is essentially so the select board. So with that in mind, my feeling is that that um, we look at salaries starting and as a line item in the budget by itself. Now, Tommy might remember this, Dan might remember this, but if you go back 20 years, 15 years, that's exactly how it was. Salaries, town employees was one line item. And if I remember correctly, um, it wasn't adequate because it wasn't broken down by department. So we could never look at the total um, cost of any one department because all of the salaries from all departments were in this one line item. So we decided to break it up. So um, my thought is that we use a hybrid model of those two, where we have a line item for salaries, we have a line item, as we do now, for compensation benefits, and so we have that, but once it's passed through for accounting purposes, that's broken up by department so that we can still see what the cost is by department um, once the salaries are plugged in. Um, so I'll throw that out for a minute and see um, what kind of a reaction you might that we might have to that or thoughts on it or um, Uh, Paul. Yes. Um, I think that makes sense. I I um, have a couple thoughts. Uh, Brian's point about the benchmarking and how time-consuming it is. 
Um, I went back and looked briefly at the personnel committee's memos. And it's obviously very hard to collect this data. In one case, we raised someone's salary. It happened to be a very small raise on the basis of one data point. Mm -hmm. And that is not benchmarking. That's cherry picking. <laughs> and I, I'm not critical of the personnel. And that means nobody you know, gave the answer. Right. So figuring out some way to do that Probably not every 10 years. I mean, I know you're throwing strawberries out there, but even if it were done every three years, you know, something and you yeah. get a little deeper. <laughs> the other thought I have is um, I, I agree this year was uh, I'm quite uncomfortable. And one of the things I didn't like is that we end up talking about increased support for the staff at the very end when we're kind of backed into a corner. Because mm -hmm. I actually think it's one of the most important things. We have 28 employees. We want sure. to keep them. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So I wondered if there's any way the calendar could be changed so that we asked the personnel committee to do whatever it is doing earlier, and we could we could be having the conversations mm -hmm. about staff increases. I definitely agree with you that we have one pool. Ola, market increases, everything we're going to change, and then mm -hmm. taking the money out of that makes sense. But if we did it earlier, we wouldn't we wouldn't kind of be rushed and giving the impression that it's sort of the last thing we care about. Right. Because right. I, I don't mm -hmm. believe that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. It's a good point because um, you know, we have the annual town meeting set in stone that we have to work towards this year, it's later. So we had a little bit more time. Prior years, it was even more condensed than than this. Um, so I agree with you. Um, I don't know what the limitations are in regards to, especially when we get all the financial data in and ask you know it's December thirty first when the books close. When do you get? When can we see? Now forget about the budgets. Okay, when can we see what we did the previous year so that we have a basis to work with? Any idea, Brian? What do you mean by the, the previous year? Well, or, or, or what information are you asking for? So I guess I'm not clear. I guess what was spent as to budget. Um, July first, so we'll always be in the we'll always be halfway through yeah. halfway. the current fiscal year, right? Yeah. Yeah. While, while we're planning for this, so right. we'll but have you could do projection, years. but you could do the previous year and then look at. So essentially, I'm just asking for if we want to do things earlier, what data can we put our arms around to try to to try to be more effective um, and have a better outcome in regards to the salary because what because the way I'm seeing it in my eyes it's you take a look at what your spending pattern is you took a, you take a look at what you spent the year before you look at colas you, you look at salary increases you look at what those numbers are and then on this side here you take a look and you see what what's the CPI for New England okay it's not a great benchmark but Give me, you know, so we look at that. We look at, um, we might look at, um, you know, the coal is for other towns. Uh, uh, you know, so we use something on this side relative to where we are. And on the other side coming in, we need that data. We need, need those data points to be able to, bring it all together and come up with a number because I think at the end of the day, we have a salary line item. Here is the here is the number. It's going to be a percent, it's going to be a dollar, dollar, and it's not up to the finance committee to tell fire, police what they're going to get. That's 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 not our job. And our job is to overview you know, everything in town so that we can put a budget together that we feel confident that it's equitable. 
and maintains services. So I, I, I have a couple of thoughts. Yeah, if I, if I can. Um, I've, I've been thinking more about the budget process as a whole. Um, you know, this is this is what we've done is always whatever I've known since I've been here. Um, right. And I do want to make a proposal to the, the finance committee select board to change it. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to start earlier. And I think the finance committee, and this is where the challenge comes in. I would like the finance committee to get a more complete budget. Um, it comes in piecemeal and look at a piecemeal. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge with that and the timing, the timing challenge with that is the schools are 60% of our budget. All right. Exactly. Yeah. So if we're looking at affordability and, and yeah. what, and I'm speaking for myself, yeah. in my own opinion, when I look at the numbers, when I'm thinking about affordability overall, that's a big unknown. Um, is you know is, is Franklin Tech going to come in at 180,000? Then, well, holy cow, you know mm -hmm. we don't want to maybe something we could have afforded. Then we're not going to do it. Right. Getting those numbers so late is tough. Yeah. Um, it is. So but it makes it a challenge. It, it and so I, I feel like I want to provide the finance committee with a more complete budget. Mm -hmm. um, and work with the department heads and the select boards. So a lot of the personnel committee recommendations are already are already in the budget and, and the select board agrees with them because it puts the finance committee in a tough spot. And I saw that more this year than in the past yep. when there was a bigger, exactly. you know, a bigger cola. Mm -hmm. um, and the question was brought up multiple times by, by the finance committee, I think rightfully so, was, well, it's not our job to set the pay rate. And it, it's it's a finance committee's job to, to say whether it's affordable or not, or, or whether yep. this amount works, right. um, and, and how that's... And when you have all these little itty-bitty points, data points, whether it's, you know, whether it's colons or whether it's adjustments... Uh, you, you end up looking at these things, you know, on a micro level where, I'm sorry, but there are personalities involved here. We're a small town, we know everybody. So for the finance committee, it's a lose-lose. Correct. Absolutely. If you, if you cut the knees out from the people that work for, for the town, that's an issue. If you go all the other way, then you got the people who own the town now look at you and say, what are you doing? Okay, so we get it at both ends. And I think that we need to get away from this position by position look for the finance com committee. That's the job of the of, So it's really backwards. The way I see it, we take a look at the numbers. We get, we get a number and we say to the, we say to the select board, this is what we see as being affordable now and long term. Now it's up to you and the personnel committee to take a look at how those monies are distributed, whether it's COLA or um, salary adjustments. That's your job, not us. So that's that's um, then once they've made that decision, then we take those numbers and we apply them to each of the budgets. That way we know each department's total cost. So that's my feeling. So I, I want to I, I do want to put something more for, uh, a more concrete proposal together mm -hmm. so that we can have you know, detailed discussions about it in the future yep. for next year. Right. Um, I think the process needs to start sooner mm -hmm. with with the department heads and with the select board yep. um, and provide numbers, you know, provide numbers. Um, I, I agree it's not useful to have, to have sort of these discussions about Individual positions, um, because no, it's and I'll call out down to numbers, right? So. And you know, I'll call out 
what we just did in regards to the fire chief position, not the person. We gotta we gotta stop right. the taking position. the people away. But we're looking at roles and we're looking at to take a 300 percent increase in a salary is is is, is almost unconscionable. But we did that. It's not a lot, not a ton of money, but it's a big per percentage. And we did it two nights. And we did it two nights because I was uncomfortable. And I I personally felt that we had three select board members that wanted, we had four personnel committee people who wanted it, and we had four. Um, three or four finance committee people who were in favor. That's enough. That's enough to put it through. Um, do I feel it was right? No, I don't. But it was enough to put it through. And I feel the biggest reason it went through was now I'll bring the personality back into it. It was because of the individual and that should not be part of the finance committee. That's not what we should do. Um, but we do. And we did. And it's here. And we're going to live with it. And I think it's going to be a, a, good, a good thing for the town. But moving forward, I don't want to see that in front of, in front of us again. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't. I agree. I don't. I don't. I think it would be better if it was just numbers. Yep. And absolutely. Um, I'd like to make that happen. Yeah. So, meaning um, that in the fire department's case, we would have. We would see the budget. The finance committee would well, just see the fire department budget, and there would be a a, a three hundred percent. Or this year, there would have been a three hundred percent increase in the chief salary. And when we asked for an explanation, the explanation would have been, we're changing chiefs and the new chief has, you know, thinks he can do this, this, do this. Right. There's things that needed to be done. Yep. And, and that's how they're justifying it. And, and I, I think the response to the finance committee would be either yes or no, or would be that we think, right, it, it, but it's numbers, right? It would be the... It would be the overall fire department budget number that would be too high, right? Right? Is that is that what I'm hearing? Um, because if we're if we're gonna look at if we're gonna say oh that salary is too high, I mean intuitively we know the per like yeah we're, we're sort of backdooring mm -hmm. we know who it is so right you yeah. know then right. it sort of comes in the back mm -hmm. door it but it's it's numbers it's about what what's affordable for the town but overall. we know right we know everybody. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it is. It's, it is. I, I picked that one person, but we know everybody, so it's 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 an uncomfortable situation, and um, and I agree with you that we have to have. I think we have to have a stronger, complete budget. Granted, we don't see the schools until the last minute. Yeah, um, but, but and it, it varies. The increases you know, so, are still variable each year. I, I was just going to say, well, maybe we'll make assumptions and go off those, but uh, <laughs> well, I don't know what the assumptions would be. Yeah. You know, if we, well, except for we elementary, but if we have a good sense about what the town side of it is and what we need to be able to provide services, um, I don't see any reason why. We can't go back on the school. I mean, I know they present us with the budget. I know they've had, um, you know, union salary negotiations. Um, but that doesn't mean we have to pass their budget. Um, we have to pass a budget. But the I'm pretty sure the law in Massachusetts says we don't have to pass that one. Right. So maybe we need to take a harder look at how or where our money's going and what we can do on that side. And 
take the personalities out of it. I don't want to hear about teachers X, Y, and Z. I don't want to hear about kids not getting bus rides. No, it's, it's if we're going to do it on one side, just numbers, we're going to do it on the other side in the same fashion. Um, so, you know, may, may I'd be I, open to that. May I go back to those salaries? Sure. I, I just heard a few different things. I, I thought, Paul, you were saying, let's just look at the total salary line mm -hmm. bundled up and make a judgment that we can raise that by 2% or 5% or 10% for the next year, whatever the percentage is, and then say back to the select board with the personnel committee's advice, decide what to do with it. Yep. Right. I assumed that we, would, that we would not then be in the position of looking to see, oh, but that means, you know, this department's going up by 14% and this department's going up by a half a percent, but that we would then be looking at the operating budgets, the non-personnel costs, department by department. Because if we immediately, I mean, if we immediately have those salary um, recommendations bundled in, then we're going to be influenced <laughs> by those numbers. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. Either, either it stays a line item <clears throat> or it stays out. It, it, it's right. a one line mm -hmm. item for all departments, mm -hmm. right. not per That's department. Right. Yeah. And then because that is, is not our duties to set those numbers, that's the personnel and the select board. Right. right. So all we do is vote on the overall line item of mm -hmm. salaries. Salaries mm -hmm. and goals and every period. All right. departments. Mm -hmm. So when we list our departments, we do not have that to fall back on and say that department's increasing. Why is it? True, we're going to end up at the root of the same cause by asking questions, but it's not going to be there in front of us to say that line item is why it's high. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's the department that we're voting on. Every department, whether it be the right, because we have to present that to the town, yeah. and we present it by department. Um, and those, I didn't say it's going to be perfect. You know, it's, it, this is a process like anything else. Well, if we if we don't see, you know, all we're going to see is the, a line item for salaries overall. Like in the highway department budget, we're not going to see. Right. Well, see then that. we're now in my mind. I'm thinking we're getting away from line item budgets for that, each department. That may be true, but we're getting away from a line item <clears throat> that we are not responsible for. That's true. the difference. Yep. We're true. responsible for. Partially, like like governing that body, that department, as to their total expenditures, but the salaries and that stuff is not ours. It's right. And right. hey, basically, look at look at the school. We can look at their budget however we want. Yeah, the one thing we cannot touch or negotiate, and that is their salary. Correct, because there's union. It's not there. Right, right. Not open for negotiation. Right. No. no. A, a thought just came to me while you know you, we were just talking about this. We have something in the budget. It's called town uh, the town fuel account. Well, we don't know right. how much the highway department uses, how much the police department uses, the water department, the fire every fire department. Everybody's sucking off of that account, but we don't know who's using what we just come up with you know brian comes up with a number twenty thousand dollars or whatever the number is town fuel so we're going to have a, a line item in the budget town salaries it's this amount of money how it gets spent by each department is not our will no longer be our problem that's where i think we should try I'm in favor of that. I am. Too. I'm just afraid that when we start assessing affordability and start asking questions and ask for explanations, 
it's going to end up back to it, where it, it very well we are this year. Yeah. I, 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 I just can't believe it's not going to happen. That, you know, if, if we're not going to challenge it, that's a different thing. But I, I know we're going to assess affordability and there's going to be challenges to the departments. Yeah. And when, when they start explaining things, we're going to need more details and more details to better understand whether it's reasonable or not. But I don't know if we're going to be, if, if the dialogue back and forth between us and the departments are going to be about personnel and about salary and maybe about number of personnel and maybe about capital items, it may be about um, changes, whatever's coming down the road in the very various departments. But when it comes to salary, I, but then part of me says the, we as the finance committee are in some ways losing control of how the town's money gets spent. I don't think so. I, 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 because at the end of the day, there is a number. Are you comfortable with the number? What does the number mean in regards to I, I, I understand that. that and then we move back from there. If you're yeah. uncomfortable with that number, then we move it back. This year, it's six million and something, right? And the right. total budget, right? And next year, it's going to be well, six we, point something. Well, we have to come up with some kind of equitable approach to what that number is, whether we look back three years or five years and we'll look at the I mean, rate of rise. To look back and see. And, the rate of rise of that last number or whichever number we want to look at, percentage or do dollars, and then have to come up and have an agreement that 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 increase year after year after year, does that continue? Can that continue? Right. What does it mean if it continues in this fashion? Um, then if what we hear is not palatable. It's not something that we think we can live with or the average homeowner at $368,000 right. can live with. Then, now it's a, it's a judgment call at some point in time. Then we move back. Now, I got a qu question going back. I thought, I think you made a good point about the salary survey and I had a question in regards to, is there any way we could get FERCOG to, I mean, they're Franklin County, they're Franklin County, um, to have, do they collect that information? If they don't, could we get them to collect it? Um, they do. Yeah. They collect that information. So, in a, in a timely fashion? No. <laughs> this year, it. was early, but last what? year it didn't come until Probably was way it. late. Yeah. I think I got it in like the end of January, the end of February. Yeah, that's but but so in, in this process that I'm envisioning, I, I mean, we need to start in November. Like, like, right. probably we should have this if requests have been made to FERCOG. This information should be set for everybody by yeah. July 1st. Sure. What we get, like, it, it, it's not timely, mm -hmm. it's a problem. Um, probably because the same problem that we face is they don't, yeah, yeah, they don't get the information. Sure, and I get it, Chief. So, so we get, I, I've seen both of the salary surveys. We, we get the Burkhardt salary survey, yeah, and then we get the salary survey with the comparisons to the town. Mm -hmm. Most of those towns that we're compared to aren't even in right? Some of them are not, yes, yeah. you know, so, right. so we're dealing with. Hatfield, we're dealing with West Hampton, we're dealing with Pelham, we're yeah. towns that aren't even in Franklin. Hinsdale, you know, they're yeah. they have nothing Archer to do with County. Franklin County. If you look at the Franklin County numbers, our numbers would be higher. So right. it's almost like we picked and choose the towns that are lower. We could keep these costs down. I mean, I've been doing this 20 years. I've been submitting budgets and it's very frustrating every year. It's been the same. Tell us what about it. It's been very, very difficult for the last 20 years because I have to pitch this Whatever I need for the department, I have to pitch it to the select board, the personnel right. committee, right. the finance committee. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing, and it's different arguments. I'm pitching services to the select board, and then I'm pitching money 
to the finance committee and it's all the same thing but how do i how do i tell the, the select board these are the services that i need this is what we need to, to function and then i come to the finance committee and you guys say we don't have the money to do that mm. so it's like we're we're fighting that battle and that's that's just the police fire has their own oh, yeah i would have their own set yep. so how can we just take one number and i I'm not saying I disagree with it. I'd, I'd have to hear more about it. But how do you take one number and say, "Here's a number that you guys are going to get to share for salaries," when you have no idea what I need for salaries, or with the highway department, there there may be adjustments and things that need to yeah. change. But you're saying you've got this much money. How do we determine what that number is? Well, the thing is, though, you still even even with the process we have now, you still get a number. It may be the number you asked for, it may be more, maybe less, but there's still a number that everyone has to live with. Um, but that, that number comes from the salary survey. To be honest with you, uh, the, the only increases that I've gotten in my in my pay in, in the 20 years as, as police chief are either cost of living or if I'm, if I'm more than 2% below the median, I get bumped up to the median. Yeah. The, the, those are the only increases. Yeah, but you have a contract I, I with do. the Board of Selectmen. I do. So technically, and we've thrown this back to you and yeah. the Board of Selectmen numerous times in my experience on the Personnel Committee. We Technically, the Personnel Committee has nothing to do with your personal compensation. Oh, it does have to do with officers and the sergeant. Yeah. But you, but it's the same discussion for for everybody. I mean, I, I have my contract negotiation, but it's the same conversation that I have with the finance committee. It's the same pitching the same thing, using the same the same sheet that I have that outlines what I do. I do the same thing for presenting it to the finance committee or the personnel committee. Yeah, but it's um, I've used I've just used myself as an example, but any increase that that Don's had. Gets bumped up to the median if he's below two percent. Right. Our part-time officers, if they're below two percent, they get bumped up to the median. Well, how else are we going to do it? But that, I'm just saying that's that's the only increase. There hasn't yeah. been any other increase. So the only way we do it is we say this is the average from the towns that we've chosen from, which most of them aren't even in Franklin County. And we say this is the average. We want to keep everybody at the average. There's very few town employees that are above that that average number. Everybody brought up to the average, and that's it. Is never above the average. So if, if you come I, in and pitch views, I mean, I understand what you come in and say, like if I come in and say, hey, I do this, 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 and this, and in my contract, I can get an extra two percent in my contract. But what what about all of the other employees that, that that do just as much or they work just as hard? Then they don't have a chance to get another increase. They're only going to get bumped up to, to that that median. So we're only saying our town employees are average. So if you give us a number and say, this is the average number that we've got, you guys have to share that. We're still looking at you're just average employees. Well, that's but you don't know that's going to happen. And with the with whatever process that we come up with, it may. OK, but we can't be 100 percent sure that'll happen. And as to how monies will be allocated you don't know that either like right now everybody gets coal coal is going to be 5.5 okay um you got you know you got a half dozen to 10 of the positions in town that will get a salary increase of one sort or another um that will be driven that decision will be driven by so, the select board um absolutely and, so, so you know, right now, um, you know, salary increases. You so much went to the fire department. So much went to you guys. So much went to highway. Maybe they say, well, this particular year we need to concentrate in this department because that, certain that won't happen. That, well, that, whether it happens or not, it's not our problem. It's not my problem. It's not our problem. So they have to maintain the services for the town. Yeah. Our, our only point right here and now is that for the sake of the town, we have to get away, away from personalities oh, having impact on the salaries that they receive or want. Having 
having individuals come in front of the finance committee to basically sell their services and the import that those services have um, is not what we should be dealing with. It's, it's very frustrating. Yes, it's very, it's frustrating. So that's our point out. That's where we are, how we move forward. Um, remains. Yeah, I, I, I would like to. I'd like to propose something. Okay. Not tonight, right. obviously, but I yeah. like to propose oh, yeah. something. So, you know, um, you know, let me get my nap in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Could I just say, could I, just one more point? One more. Point. Only because you're the chief. <laughs> it's, your, it's in your contract. Yeah. So, so you you talk, which I agree with, you talked about the, the liaisons for we, we have the select board, we have the liaisons. Yeah. The liaisons yeah. with the select board. Yeah. Supposed to report to them. They're supposed to oversee us and talk with us. Right. It only it only happened for two years since I took over as police chief, mm -hmm. where we had liaison from the finance committee as well. Going going back twenty plus years, there was a finance committee liaison to each department. Yeah. Like I said, I only I only got to do it twice. But to me, if I could sit down with a finance committee member, whoever my liaison is, and say. This is this is what I need for money. We could have a frank discussion. We could yell at each other, go back and forth for for a couple hours or whatever, and say, "This is here's my budget." And then somebody else does the highway, somebody else does the fire department. Yeah. Then I think the the finance committee have a better understanding because what you get from from my budget is just my ten or fifteen minute presentation that yeah. I say, "You know, I need this, this, this. I got to increase my dues. I got to do this. I got to do that." But maybe maybe there needs to be a better discussion like we have with the select board for that that oversight. Maybe right. going back to the liaison. If I got a li liaison for the select board, I could talk to them. I could stop and talk to them around town. Yeah. If Tommy's my liaison to the police station, I can I could stop and talk to him if I see him on the side of the road. Say, hey, I got this issue. Then he knows more what's going on with the police station. So when it comes time where we're we need to increase our services or we need to increase it, at least you have a better idea of yeah. what's going on. Um, I, I like the liaison look, idea. Yep. Everything we did have all that. cards are on the table. Table, so there's and, and that's why I just wanted to throw it out. It's okay. it, it worked the, the yeah. two times that I did it. Yeah. I, I really liked it, and yeah. we haven't gone back in since. So. Okay. <clears throat> um, I mean, I, I'm I'm kind of out of bullets here, and, and uh, you know, I don't know. You want to deal a new deck here, or you know, what do you want to do? Well, let's cut on the budget. So. Uh, the um, the areas where we have the least control and kind of got bullied into approving higher increases generally are the ones that we share with other towns. Correct. Schools, obviously. Correct. Scans, yes. But also the South County Senior Center, the mm -hmm. Tri-Town Beach. I mean, yep. that guy from Deerfield was nice enough to come on this oh, room. Yeah. And, you know, we all kind of threw our hands up and said, mm -hmm. okay, we're probably fine. I don't know what we can do about that, but I would just like to flag that from my point of view as a, a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which isn't to say I'm opposed to mm -hmm. sharing services with other towns. Yeah. No. In, in the abstract, it sounds that's, like a good idea in the abstract. Because <laughs> it's well, that, that's been a problem for 40 years. Yeah. I've been doing this for more than 40 years, yeah. and it's been a, a problem all along. Yeah. But it's a, there's no, uh, it's not like we can have our own frontier. We can't have our own. And, and, and here is, and here is where, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the same situation. What we have is a request model. So people all come in, they all ask for whatever they want to ask. Yeah. And then we take it back. How's it fit in? And all of a sudden. We need to start at the end and work. Well, right now we've got six million, what whatever is the budget. What can we live with the next year? First, and we get a number. And then salaries go here, and we have a number for every department. Right. And we say we see right now that your department takes up so much percentage of. The, the budget in the town, and based on this number that we have for the whole town, this would probably be what you're going to have to work with for capital, for anything outside of the salary. Um, 
Because this, and just, I mean, just look at it. Just look at the United States, look at Congress. I mean, it's a runaway train. It's absolutely, it, it's, it's mind boggling. Don't even. And it's not, it, 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 and it's all, you know, it, it, and it all comes down to the feeder streams. You know, for any of the fishermen out there, and you know, you know, we get the big rivers from the little feeder streams that come in. We're a feeder stream. We're all, all, all the little towns, all feeder streams, and uh, our thinking and how we think and how we behave and what we do gets reflected in the overall pie that we have here in these United States. I think States. we need to discuss this more, but you know, not to beat a dead horse, but, yeah. you know, to drag this out any longer. Just keep, one, this, just one, keep this in mind. Yeah. yeah. We have a in capital planning. Yep. Same as all all the departments mm -hmm. have a 10-year capital improvement plan to go yes. by, yep. which is forecasting what it's going to cost to run that department. Mm -hmm. If you want to say new fire trucks and that goes into a uh, debt service for right. 20 yep. years, blah, blah, we schedule a dump truck every so many years, pick up every so many years. That same principle should be applied to salaries. In other words, they know it's going to cost more every year. You're going to have capital. You're, you're going to have somebody's going to be due for a raise. Okay. They've had they've been at this step for so long, and they're going to be due for a raise. That should be figured in. How many guys are going to fall into that next year? So that they can end up with the uh the other committees, but the uh, personnel. personnel committee and the board of select board yep. can have an idea of where this number is going in a period of 10 years, which I think is what you're looking at. Well, yeah. where is it going in 10 years? It's out of control. Yep. Yeah. Because they have no idea what they're they, they're they're mm -hmm. forecasting for this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they aren't forecasting for the future, which is what we kind of have to do to make a yep. budget work. Yep. In the years to come, and, and I agree. The, the, end, end, chapter 11. the end result of the person by person review is we just have an endless, oh, that 23 cent increase will only be two thousand dollars, or you know, but yeah, but it doesn't go away, well, never goes well, away, and, never and goes away. No, we're not mm -hmm. looking at the we're not looking at an end point, right? Which is, yeah, no. which is what you need to be looking yes. at. You need yeah. to know what's right. what the, if right. you know this. Not, not to talk about the cola, but if you, you know, you give a cola, you're going to give 5.5% cola this year or whatever it is. That now you know, now the personnel committee and the select board should know that that number is not going away next year. It's that, that 5.5 they got this year. It might be another 5.5 next year. Well, there should be, it should be like unions. They develop a contract for three years or six years. And that overall contract gives them what they're going to get for a total coal. They they know they what talk, they're... Well, we'll take two percent this year. We'll take three percent that year, and we'll take two percent the next year. Well, I assume that's what the teachers union yep. Yep, does. That's right. Why doing. are we doing something like that? It costs a lot more money because I, we don't have unions. Number one, it, 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 costs, cost, a it costs a lot more money. money. You're, you're all getting it. We, we're averaging three yes. above the normal average. I've, I've had, I mean, anybody that's been around for a while, and I've, I've had my budget cut of 1%. We've had 0% increases. We've had 1% possibility. So it's, it's never I'm not no talking, number. It's just, I'm not talking your budget. I'm talking about your, your salaries. Yeah, well, that's part of the, part of the budget. Yeah. But well, you're, you're going to a step system at that point. Yeah. Like what, what he's yeah, talking about. Which we have the step system. system but that you know what it's going to be for that. Mr. Year. Chair, we should table it. I think we should, but I, I I think this was a good start. I think we got a lot of stuff out. Um, we got a, ideas went back and forth. Um, by no means is it written in stone. By no means are we at the end of the race here. But um, I think Brian had a um, good idea that if in fact we're going to go down this road, that we need to start a little earlier. Um, we have um, we have the budget set. For annual town meeting, 
Um, it would be great if everybody could be there in mass. Um, that would be terrific. Um, and anything, Onyx? Brian, do you have anything? Nope. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Okay, Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Yeah. Oh, she's <laughs> still in. She's not. She's still in. Okay.